All right, good evening. As you can see, we are all in one room tonight, uh, except for Lydia, sorry, Lydia. Um, but we have uh, successfully, we believe, figured out the technology. So props, Mr. San Francisco, uh, for getting this all squared away. So we are going to call this meeting to order. Um, let's see. This is the Owen J. Roberts Board of School Directors regular business meeting being held on January 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, please join us in a moment of silence as we reflect on those serving in the United States Armed Forces, both past and present, the elected leaders for the state of Pennsylvania and elected leaders of our nation. We have much to be thankful for in our community. Please be seated. All right, item three, executive session announcement. The Board of School Directors met on the following dates in executive session to discuss items in one or more of the following areas, personnel or legal matters, uh, January 19th, 2021. A board walk workshop was held on January 11th, 2021. Uh, item four is appointment of board members to standing committees and school board representatives by school board president. Do we need a motion for this? Not there. Yeah. Mr. Subers, do we need a motion for this? It's just an appointment of board members. So to we're, um, appointment of board members to standing committees. Yes, I would make a motion. All right, I'll make a motion that we go forward with these appointments. Wait, hold on. Where's my paper? Hold on. Hold on. All right. Do I have a motion? Your motion. Mr. Friel, do I have a second? Uh, Mrs. Booth, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item five, superintendent's report. Dr. Lloyd. Thank you, Madam President. We'll begin this evening with our report from our student government executive, council president, Dante DiNardo. Hi, Dante. Hello, how is everyone? We are well, good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so tonight we'll start with the elementary schools, uh, the East Coventry fourth, fifth and sixth graders uh, developed a research topic that they then conducted an experiment on and presented a Google slide show displaying their results. Five of those students from each grade are moving on to the Chester County Science Research Competition. Um, East Vincent also started a science fair um it's it's virtual just like east coventry's and five of their students from each grade are also moving on to the uh chester county science research fair east vincent also uh started their mentor program which they meet which students meet every wednesday with a mentor who gives them one-on-one -on -one, um instruction and reviews schoolwork with them um French Creek will be participating in the Great Kindness Challenge, which battles bullying and promotes increased engagement. Um, students in grades three through six will participate in a virtual author visit with Miss Jenny Walsh, who is an Owen J. Roberts alumni. Um, West Vincent 
uh, West Vincent's holiday drive-through was a big success and the students love seeing Mr. Smith dressed as Buddy the Elf. Uh, for the middle school, the course selection process for the eighth graders has begun and uh, high school counselors will begin meeting with them shortly. Uh, and they'll explain to the students the process and uh, what they need to graduate. Um, the course selection process for sixth and seventh graders will uh, be released shortly. The Tri M Music Honor Society is selling virtual Valentine's Day grams, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, students can select a song of their choice to be performed for a person of their choice by a member of Tri M. And for the high school, NHS students are continuing to offer their tutoring on asynchronous Wednesdays. Um, and they are currently working on the updated schedule for January and February. Many talented o OJR musicians uh, qualified for this year's district band, chorus and orchestra and cymbals. And finally, the cast list for Little Women, the spring play has been finalized and the video production club has finished editing the fall play, which is now available on the high school homepage. And that concludes my report. Thank you so much, Dante. January is school board recognition month. And so um, each of our school board members have, has a little gift bag at your, your spot with um, a gift from the high school student council. And so we hope that you will wear your new OJR face mask proudly. So I have a proclamation uh, for all of you. Um, School Board Recognition Month, January of 2021. Whereas the role of locally elected school officials has served the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and local communities in meeting the needs of public education since the passage of the Free School Act in 1834. And whereas these local boards have discharged the responsibilities to public education in a manner which has placed public education in the forefront of our educational systems, and whereas locally elected officials have distinguished themselves and their communities in this non-paid voluntary public service commitment. And whereas the contributions of these men and women should be recognized and appreciated by those who benefit from the working of our public school systems. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania Bo School Boards Association hereby proclaims the month of January as School Director Recognition Month in the Commonwealth, and further resolve that the proclamation be communicated to all school directors, school officials, and local communities in a plan program which brings visibility and awareness to the role of locally elected school officials to the citizenry of the Commonwealth. Thank you. On behalf of all of our, our students and our staff, we want to thank you for the many countless hours um, that you put in, the thankless countless hours that you put in to serve the O and J Roberts School District. So thank you, each one of you. All right, on to my report. So I have great news, great news. Um, the estimate from PDE for OJR's portion of the CARES Act funding, round two, has been revised to $1.4 million. As the board is aware, due to COVID, um, we have incurred unfunded expenditures that will be applied to this grant. Once finalized, we will post an update in the COVID section of the finance website. On tonight's agenda, I will be asking for approval of a memorandum of agreement between the school district and the Chester County Health Department to permit rapid antigen testing at the high school for symptomatic students and employees. This testing initiative includes five Pennsylvania counties and is part of the nation's coronavirus testing strategy. This will give us one more tool for us to protect our students and our staff from COVID-19 exposure. Um, you'll also note that the health and safety plan is um, on the agenda for you to 
um, approved because the antigen testing has been added to that. With regards to our work surrounding equity, I want to thank the North Coventry PTO for hosting a community event on implicit bias um, with local diversity and equity expert Justin Brown. Tomorrow there will be training provided to all teachers and paraprofessionals um, also focused on implicit bias um, titled Breaking Away from Bias, co-facilitated by Laurie Kuzik and Michelle Govan. The training will raise awareness for our implicit bias and give tips to mitigation. The Chester County Health Department has developed a plan to accelerate the vaccination of our education community. Staff at public K-12 and non-public K-12 schools and child care staff, approximately 15,000 individuals in Chester County. This plan leverages the wide-scale distribution expertise that the county and school partners have been developing over many years. The plan calls for four school-based vaccination sites to be open concurrently over the course of three to four weekends, beginning as early as January 30th. After staff has received the first dose of the vaccine, the plan will be repeated for the second dose. The most critical element of this plan is the vaccine, both the timing and the amount of vaccine. At this time, with the limited access to vaccine and no clear sustained access to large quantities of vaccine, in a consistent basis, the health department will need to delay the plan for our education community. Access to the vaccine is necessary to returning our students to in-person learning. I urge our board members and those of you watching this meeting tonight to contact your local legislators and urge them to use their position to have the vaccine delivered to Chester County in order for our teachers and our school personnel to be vaccinated against this deadly virus. This concludes my report. All right, thank you, Dr. Lloyd. Uh, we're gonna move on to item six, which is public comment. Information, proposals, and statements from individuals or delegations pertaining to items on the agenda. Speakers are to indicate your name, township of residence, and the item on the agenda to which your comments are addressed. Speakers will be limited to no more than three minutes. Please understand this is not a time for dialogue with the board. Rather, the board will listen to all comments and consider them in future deliberations. Um, also, if you have a question for the school board, uh, please don't hesitate to email us. Um, we can be contacted at schoolboardmembers at ojrsd.net. Um, Jackie did actually uh, just update our school board website so that you can see the email address. It was originally just a click here. So um, appreciate that call out we received. Um, all right, and so then there's a guideline for anyone that would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand function. Um, and when it is your turn to speak, please state your name and township residence. Madam President, the first person is Michael Huhas. Hi, I'm Michael Uhas, North Coventry Township resident. Uh, and middle school teacher, and I would like to speak on agenda item 13.3. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of all middle school teachers. We request that the board votes no to the proposed middle school plan to bring in students for half days on Wednesdays. This plan was created due to a request from the school board to increase in-person learning, but is not supported by middle school teachers because we believe it puts students who are currently struggling at a greater disadvantage. It does not fully support learners in all settings, and it creates more inconsistency in our learning model. My colleagues and I believe that in order to best support all of our learners, hybrid and cyber, we should continue with a fully asynchronous Wednesday. As shared with the board in the REA's letter on January 4th, a fully asynchronous Wednesday provides teachers with invaluable time for a variety of crucial activities that support our students. On Wednesdays, we contact families, provide students with feedback, and most importantly, support struggling learners. At the middle school, our lowest performing students are already struggling to keep pace with instruction. Wednesdays provide us with the opportunity to reach out to these students and their families on a regular basis and to provide them with the remediation and focus support they need during individual meetings. Regular education and special education teachers within our building agree 
that adding synchronous instruction on Wednesday, even in a half day format, will not support our students. It will only exacerbate the issues that these struggling learners are facing. For our 300 plus cyber learners, we are able to, to conduct office hours, a more individually focused time where these students feel more comfortable asking questions. The current schedule also provides us with the time to research, plan, and develop lessons and materials that benefit both in-person and remote learners. The proposed half-day plan will once again disrupt our educational model, especially as it will begin in the middle of a marking period. Continuing with an asynchronous Wednesday will maintain consistency for all students, parents, and teachers. Our staff and the parents within our community have worked hard to implement routines during this chaotic year. And a half day in the middle of the week will disrupt the daily and weekly routines that have become familiar to students. As educators, we want what is best for our students. Maintaining a fully asynchronous Wednesday is the best model for students, parents, and teachers. Please vote no to this proposed half day plan. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, that's the end of public comment. All right, item seven, board committee reports. Uh, meeting, the, a meeting of the Committee of the Whole was held on January 4th, 2020 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The following committees met at that time, Curriculum and Instruction Committee, Finance Committee, and Personnel Committee. The board was provided a draft copy of the combined Buildings and Grounds and Finance Committee meeting minutes. Item 7.2, Buildings and Grounds Committee. Um, so we're going to stick with our old chairs for these reports tonight, um, just so that the uh, public is aware. So uh, Mrs. Booth. Thank you, and good evening. Um, I won't take any inference to the message of being old um, as an old committee member, but. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know that's not what I'm. <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's not. Anyway, um, going forward. Buildings and Grounds and Finance Committee met November 18th, 2020 in a combined workshop. Both committee discussions addressed consolidation of district owned properties and improvement of operational and fiscal efficiencies. Following the December 7th, 2020 board approval to proceed with the conversion of the educationally vacated East Coventry Elementary facility to a district wide service center Excuse me, I'm having a little trouble breathing with this, uh, but I will wade through this. Um, to a district-wide service center and subsequent unanimous approval of the zoning modification by East Coventry Planning Commission, we await the mandatory February 8, 2020 EC public hearing with hopes to receive a final East Coventry Township Supervisor's March approval prior to taking next steps. Timely action is required due to the district warehouse lease expiration, October 20th, 2022, $230,000 $230, per annum with an escalation clause. The, I will go forward. Following the December 2020 Board Energy Savings Project approval, Owen J. Roberts directed request for proposals known as RFPs from energy service companies known as ESCOs was advertised last weekend in the Pasta Mercury and Daily Local and will be advertised this coming weekend and Monday, January 25th, 2021. FRP receipt is requested by March 5th, 2021. Following the receipt of the RFPs, the district will open bids, finalize due diligence and present an administrative recommendation to the Buildings and Grounds Committee for potential consideration by the full board. This again is a project best acted on immediately. This project highlights, we constantly spend money on energy. This project highlights long-term dollar gain as well as immediate dollar return and energy conversation efficiencies. No monies have been spent at this juncture. Buildings and Grounds items this evening for approval Item 13.11, membership to the Keystone Purchasing Network, Lawton Lake, Milton, Pennsylvania. Item 13.12, there are two items relevant to buildings and grounds. 
The first is purchasing agreement with E-rate customers through the federal E-rate program, CDW, Government LL, 230 North Milwaukee Avenue, Vernon Hills, Illinois. The, prob the program is for funding year 2021, effective July 1st, 2021, terminating June 30th, 2022. The second is an agreement with CMD Transportation Services, 902 Farmington Avenue, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, 19464, for supplemental transportation services as presented. No standalone buildings and grounds is scheduled. Buildings and grounds and finance will reconvene Tuesday, February 1st, 2021 via Zoom during the Committee of the Whole. That's it, and I need to take a deep breath. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Booth. Uh, item 7.3, Chester County Intermediate Unit, Mrs. Thompson. The intermediate unit did not have a December meeting and their January meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. So I don't really have very much to update other you than You have that. lots of meetings this week. Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> item 7.4, Curriculum and Instruction Committee. Uh, Mrs. DiMarino. Thank you. Um, the Curriculum Committee met on Monday, January 4th as part of the Committee of the Whole and there were three agenda items. Dr. Soder presented a brief summary of available assessment data to compare the current progress of students working in the blended program and the cyber program. This included many ways that teachers, specialists, and administrators are supporting students who are currently struggling in both the blended and cyber environment. Dr. Lloyd presented potential plans for increasing in-person learning for elementary, middle, and high school students. After discussing the plans at length, the committee chose to move the middle and high school plans forward for the full board to consider. Dr. Soder also shared information about the Keystone, Keystone exams. Students who were enrolled in a Keystone course last year are not required to take the Keystone exam for that course. Students will need to consider their options for the graduation requirements related to the Keystones. Since these scores will not be a part of the, scores, the school score total, there will be an impact at the high school for one year for literature, two years for biology, and up to five years for Algebra I. Uh, Mrs. Stutzman will be the curricular, curriculum chair going forward, and so she also has some information to share with us regarding our steps forward. So go ahead, Mrs. Stutzman. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Prophet, I believe you asked for uh, information regarding cyber options for the following school year for the 2021-22 school year to be shared with the community. So I just wanted to come back and provide a little bit of information about when, when we will have more information and when that's coming out. Um, for the high school, uh, students and parents actually already received an email message about the program with a link to a dedicated page on our website. Um, on that page, there's a survey link that's requesting parents to share if they are interested in that program to begin to gauge the level of interest. Um, so parents on the call if uh, high school students, if you didn't see that, please check that out. Um, current eighth grade students are also going to hear about uh, options as part of their scheduled sessions with high school uh, guidance counselors beginning uh, today or January 20th, that's today, tomorrow, January 20th. And then finally, information will also be shared with parents during the scheduled meeting for high school course registration, which I believe is next week. Um, for middle school, our current sixth and seventh grade students and parents will be receiving an interest survey uh, uh, about cyber options for the following year. I believe that's coming out next week. And in addition to that, the parent meeting scheduled for February 10th will include information about cyber options for next year. And uh, elementary principals for the elementary schools will be sharing information about the same cyber options during the first week of March. Um, and this will also include an interest survey for families to gauge that interest level. Um, if anyone uh, hearing this has any immediate questions that they would like to ask, they can direct uh, high school questions to the guidance staff at the high school um, and uh, elementary or middle school questions to your school principal. And that is all that we have. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, item 7.5, uh, Finance Committee, Mr. Friel. Thank you. Uh, 
the finance committee update is, uh, as Ms. Booth said, we're going to have the next meetings on February 1st. First, uh, tonight on the agenda is the approval of the accelerated budget opt-out. And if you guys remember, this was where we're, we, we have to file with Pennsylvania and choose to opt out of uh, the ability to raise taxes beyond that uh, <coughs> 3%, I believe, Jackie, right, that they presented, which we we're going to do, and that's the re resolution that's on there tonight. Um, the other two agenda items, 3.11, is membership in the key pro Keystone Purchasing Agreement, which I think Ms. Booth reviewed, and on 13.12, uh, we're our auditors. It's just the approval of the auditing firm for next uh, fiscal year. And that's it for finance. All right, thank you. Item 7.6, Legislative and Policy Committee. Uh, Dr. Malmazak. Good evening. The uh, Policy Committee has not met since uh, last year, November. Uh, we did have a, a planning session uh, with uh, Dr. Martini and Ms. Munson uh, last Thursday, uh, January 14th, uh, and we're going to have our next LMP meeting next Monday, January 25th. Great. All right. Item 7.7, .7, Personnel Committee. Uh, Mrs. Stetson. Um, the Personnel Committee met as part of Committee of the Whole on January 4th. Uh, Mrs. Hay reviewed the process and timeline for our high school principal search and announced um, a survey that would be emailed out to students and parents the following week um, for their input on that search. Uh, we hope to have final candidate for board approval during the May business meeting. Um, and that was the extent of that time. And we, as far as I know, do not have a standalone committee meeting currently scheduled. Um, um, but as was introduced, I think that was the last meeting, uh, Mr. Freel will be chairing this committee for 2021. Okay, thank you. Item 7.8, People Services and Special Education Committee. Um, so I'm sad to say this will be my last People Services update report. I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Marchini. It has been a pleasure working with you over the last few years. Um, also on that note, I wanted to thank him and Mr. Bentman and the wonderful parents in the North Coventry PTO and Aid Committee for bringing Justin Brown to our district yesterday. As Dr. Lloyd mentioned, he conducted two incredible sessions for our parents, one discussion about implicit bias and one about racism. Uh, Justin was an excellent presenter, and I have to say I'm very jealous that Downingtown snatched him up. Um, but no worries. He said he's only an email or phone call away. Um, I personally find I understand concepts better when I'm able to relate to them in real life. Justin used many group games to help explain what an implicit bias is. His one game that is called This or That really helped drive it home. Um, he asked the group if they were a dog person or a cat person. I was going to play that game with all of you, but I know some of you don't like icebreaker games, so I'm not going to do it. Um, but maybe we can snag him for a board retreat sometime. Um, the board did have an excellent board workshop last week with our central admin team and our building principals. Uh, the goal of that workshop was to continue our work towards equity. While this is not necessarily a people services conversation, I would be remiss not to mention it. Um, Dr. Lloyd and I met with uh, Dr. Heather Bennett, the Director of School Equity at PSBA in late December to share our progress and the listening sessions we had conducted. Uh, Dr. Bennett recommended the next best steps would be to take a deeper dive into our school data and understand the makeup of our student body. She also recommended we pull out common themes from our listening sessions to help us define what equity means for our school district and help us to continue to take action. I want to thank our administration for such a great workshop and for spending yet another late evening with us. Uh, it is so insightful to hear from our admin team what their perspectives are for each of their buildings. And I'm really looking forward to continuing this great work with you all. All right, item 7.9, Technology and Communications Committee. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, so Jennifer Munson is the uh, old chair. Not old, but previous. <laughs> and <laughs> Mr. DeFore will be the new chair. Um, so we are still investigating survey companies. We had had interviews with two of them that had a very different approach to how they survey communities on behalf of the district. And I believe we have one more that we're trying to line up. Um, also, this is really exciting. If you have not actually been to OJRSD.com recently, please go and look at the website. Over the winter break, they uh, moved to a new visual interface. 
Um, this redesign is still in progress on the back end, but you will immediately see the difference when you get there. It's a lot more mobile friendly when you bring it up on any size screen. It resizes very nicely to that screen. Um, just you know, scroll through and look for the things that you're used to looking for, and I'm I'm pretty sure you'll find them easily because it's it's presenting everything very nice, oh, very nicely. Okay, thank you. So if you didn't catch what I was saying, I'm telling everybody to go look at the website. <laughs> it is also ADA compliant now. It has a high contrast mode toggle. It also can be uh, changed to different languages. Uh, we have um, streamlined the content. There's been some cleanup on the back end that has happened already, which will improve our search results. Um, basically, whether you're going from Google or right on the, the website, we should get better search results. Easy access buttons, alert messages, and the great news for the folks inside OJR is that it's the same back end system, so nobody needs to be retrained on how to share their content. And one more website related thing, a, a community member, Ralph Bozarth, has put together a website called OJRSDHistory.com. We also have a link to that from our OJR website. It's got pictures and all sorts of information about the history of our school district. So I encourage you to check that out too. And we do not currently have a next meeting scheduled for technology and communications. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to move on to item eight, recommended routine matters. Item 8.1, motion to approve recommended routine matters, consent items 8.2 through 8.11. Uh, the board will make a motion to approve the following routine matters, which are items 8.2 through 8.11 as action consent items. Do I have a motion? Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Uh, Dr. Melnizak, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item 8.12, uh, acknowledge receipt of donations, contributions, and gifts. Um, so we are acknowledging the receipt of donations, contributions, and gifts to the Owen J. Roberts School District as presented um, from the Vanguard Matching Gift Program, West Vincent Elementary, uh, received a blackboard giving fund of $40.25. The middle school received a blackboard giving fund of $17.50. The East Vincent Elementary School uh, PTA purchased a subscription to the Reading Eggs for the, uh, sorry, the Reading Eggs for the kindergarten <laughs> students. The value of the subscription is $480. And from the middle school, Justin uh, Levin from Hanover County uh, Company donated uh, hand sanitizer with an approximate value of $100. So thank you so much for those um, contributions. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Booth, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item nine, approval for of <coughs> routine matters. Uh, item 9.1, motion to approve routine matters, consent items nine, two through nine, five. The board will make a motion to approve the following routine matters, which are items 9.2 through 9.5 as action consent items. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, item 10, board discussion. Uh, I do have a couple board discussion points, if you all don't mind. All right, so first and foremost, um, I feel like this is a pretty easy fix, um, but I'm wondering if the finance committee uh, could put together a document showing our tax increases for the last 10 years and on average what that looks like for our taxpayers. Um, Mrs. Booth, you and I had spoken and I believe that something does exist, um, but I think it's just very challenging to pass so much knowledge on to new board members um, mm -hmm. as they come in. And I feel like this would be an important document for new board members to be able to review in order for a board to remain fiscally responsible. I, I absolutely agree. And very interestingly, um, Mrs. Crumrun and I had a discussion last week um, on the exact same topic. And I did request that we put out some information uh, for the public and for the board 
that will speak in what I call layman's terms and not accounting terms. Um, number one, giving the impact of starting, we're going to start this time with a, and, and look at what would occur within the district with a zero tax increase and look at it incrementally as it moves forward. But we also need to let the public know that much of what we already have is contractually um, issued. We can't back out of it. We have very little funds that we can actually play with. So we need to let everyone know in layman's terms what impact a tax increase or no tax increase has on the school district and with the students of the school, let alone the staff in the community who is impacted by their taxes. We take more out of our constituents' pockets than any other tax form that most people come into contact with. And that is not realized by many people. We take a lot of money out of our residents' pockets. We don't do that lightly. We do it with intent and with integrity, and we need to let the public know why we do what we do and how we do what we do. So I think it's very timely. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mrs. Carmine, we do usually have that 10-year graph. We do. We it's do. actually in the budget document, but I can lift right. it and show it separately. As it's I've said all these eight years, it's voluminous, and the public can't always find that. Sure. So we will present no that and also present in layman's terms um, what occurs during the budget, budget process and how it impacts our students and our community. So thank you for bringing it up, and we will be moving forward next week. Uh, not next week, but February 1st. We do speak to the public continually in the budget process. For those who are concerned, they need to tune in, but they can also now go to the newer website and find the issues uh, maybe with an easier format. But I think it's a, a good way to start the new year. So thank you for bringing it up. All right, I do have a second item uh, for technology. Um, so uh, we had someone reach out uh, today um, asking if we could publicly share out our board meetings a little more. And I'm wondering if the Technology and Communications Committee could take that back um, and pursue what other avenues there might be. So I know some people aren't on Facebook and we have started to, excuse me, started to advertise on Facebook. Um, but I think maybe looking at what other districts are doing um, to advertise that more. I don't think it ever hurts to look at what we're doing and improve it from time to time. So. Right. Do that. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then my third item, um, and I, I'm not sure if this, I think we should start discussing it here um, and then figure out if this goes to the curriculum committee. Um, in my discussion with other school districts, it's become incredibly glaring that we are one of two districts in Chester County that is not offering um, our uh, low incidence special education students, particularly our life skills and autistic support students, uh, five day week instruction. Um, with this new recommendation that came out from PDE, uh, it mentions uh, special groups. Um, and I believe that these students would fall into these groups. So, um, Mrs. Prophet, you're referring to the January 7th um, revision that Pennsylvania Department of Education, the recommendations um, that they had made. Some of it was to the chart that I've shared um, with the board, um, which doesn't necessarily apply so much to our school district because we're in person. What was also part of that that you're referring to um, is the, it specifically says, for all instructional models, it may be appropriate for a school entity to provide in-person instruction for targeted student populations. For example, students with disabilities, English language learners, regardless of their grade. And so that was a, a, a change because of, during the substantial range originally, PDE was saying um, that, we, that all schools should be virtual. Um, they changed that stance for elementaries um, to be in person. Um, the attestation um, supports all grades being in person. And then they've also come out to say that targeted groups should also be in person regardless of their grade. So I guess what I'm, I'm wondering is would the curriculum committee want to take this on next week? Is this an easier fix than that? Um, what does the rest of the board think? 
I have a qu quick question. When we talk about low incidence uh, special education, can you do we have any kind of ballpark of how many students that is, and are there any classes that would struggle to have enough space to accommodate them if they were there five days a week? I believe um, that we, when they talk about low incidence populations, they're talking about life skills, autistic support classrooms. So the specialized classrooms um, that we have um, for our students, it's possible um, that we might not be able to accommodate some of our students that are classified as emotionally disturbed um, and need emotional support. Those students aren't, in here in ONJ, um, those students spend the majority of their time in the regular education classrooms. Um, and so they may, you, you might not want to target that particular group of students or um, allow that to be by choice um, for, for families. It's a, it's a much different population than your life skills or your students that are receiving intensive autistic support. But I believe the, the number of students is, is pretty low. For life skills, um, for life skills and, and autistic, and autistic support. support, yes, those those numbers are lower. Um, those those students typically have um, have aides, or those classrooms have paraprofessionals in them to support those students as well. How how many days a week are they currently getting in the in the current hybrid model? So in the current model, they may they may attend four days a week. If you remember back in September when we started that, we left that up to parent choice. Okay. Um, that they may attend two or they may attend four days a week with parent choice. Okay. When you were talking, referencing that um, chart we got that showed that other school districts in our county are having these students in, um, were they also referencing they're emotionally disturbed or is that not the um, standard that we were looking at to create that? The um, the schools that are bringing in their um, ES population are, stu are schools that have um, students that are more severely disabled than the students that attend our school um, here. So we probably have students that we have placed out in those programs um, that are attending in person. They're not um, bringing in their, um, their general ES population. Student of, um, Susan, of the students who may attend two or four days per week in our current model, what would you say estimate is the percentage that are taking advantage of all four days? Hmm. I'd have to I'd have to get back to you on that one, Mrs. Mrs. Stutzman. What the percentage is? I know that the I know that our our percentages of overall special education um, students fluctuates, um, and that our our teachers um, that for our students that are struggling to be successful, whether they're virtual or they're only coming two days, um, they're working with those families for those students to come more days, but I don't know off the top of my head what that percentage of, of students would be. Okay, are that's we fine. don't need to necessarily get back unless the rest of the board wants it. I was thinking through, um, you know, is it something that's already taken great advantage of and, and they would welcome that additional day, essentially. I have a logistic question because mm -hmm. this, you know, when I think about the student population with special needs or something where there's instructional support in place five days a week versus general population where we're going to run into the Wednesday issue and some of the other for five day, you know, in high school, if I'm a, if it's just all kids with an IEP saying five days, we don't necessarily have, I mean, will we run into logistical issues, but could we do a smaller subset of that population and make it, would it be an easier, can we separate it? I guess the question is, can we separate mm -hmm. those two populations? So if there's an easy fix for some of them, we can just go do it. And it, mm -hmm. and so I, th I think with, with life people. skills and autistic supports, you have actual dedicated classrooms and teachers for those students. So is that something we could just do? So that's another thing. Um, we did, uh, we did vote on a, a resolution to allow Dr. Lloyd to make decisions oh, okay. um, for the district. And so um, that you're correct that the resolution that you voted on back in July, um, I believe, gives me the authority to make those those changes. Um, I've 
I try to get a sense of, of where the board is <laughs> um, be, without make, just you know, plowing ahead um, on those decisions. But um, yes, I, we certainly could um, look at targeting um, those students and bringing those students in five days a week. And then what additional supports and services would we need to provide those teachers? Um, because, you know, and, and looking at each of those individual caseloads. Some of our, our students, as, as some of you know, um, just because a student has a life skills or an autistic label doesn't mean they're not in the regular education classroom. Um, and so if we're talking about a Wednesday, that teacher might not be available because they're asynchronous. We would need to provide some, um, some supports for, for those students. <coughs> and perhaps that um, the student is t attending asynchronously just here. Um, and they're working with a, with a paraprofessional or a substitute teacher just here. So um, I do think that that's, uh, that's doable. Um, I would say we should, um, if we're looking at a timeline, um, I would, I'd ask that we would have two weeks to be able to put something together, you know, and be able to make sure we knew what our teachers um, needed for those students to be able to attend five days a week. Plus, we also have to arrange for transportation. We also have to arrange for food services. So that's why I'm saying two, two weeks um, to get that, that do you, up and Do you going. feel that's enough time, two weeks? I think so. Uh, Mrs. Crumrine, um, in terms of, of food service and transportation, is two weeks enough time, or, or do you think we need longer to arrange for that? No, I think that's enough time. Okay, that's our, our biggest, I think that's our biggest hurdle. Right Can now. I ask what your administrative recommendation would be? I, I absolutely would recommend um, that our life skills students and our autistic, our students that are receive um, autistic support. Now, I'm not saying all autistic students because many of them are very high performing students, but our students that are in our specialized classrooms, I would recommend um, that you look at those populations as your targeted populations. So Mr. Supers, we wouldn't need to make a motion for this uh, because we have that resolution. No, actually, um, Dr. Lloyd had um, uh, inquired regarding that matter earlier and I did take a look at the resolution. Um, the resolution empowers Dr. Lloyd um, and her designees to take whatever actions necessary to implement the July 30 resolution and included in as part of that resolution was the instructional time template, which um, provides two representations. One is that, um, that we would be providing uh, students eligible for special education, a free appropriate public education. And also it says that uh, Dr. Lloyd would be uh, continued to monitor the programs and make necessary, uh, or, or excuse me, and necessary adjustments will be made uh, when data highlight con concerns about quality, equity, and or lack of progress in student learning. So I think those provisions um, and their incorporation into the prior resolution would authorize Dr. Lloyd to take these actions. Seems to me from what you said, Dr. Lloyd, that that's the direction that our state authorities are kind of moving in anyway from where we started to where we're going. So I certainly would have no objection to kind of taking your recommendation and timetable on this. Okay. Agreed. Yeah, I'm okay. agreed. I, I think agreed. If, if we're out of line with the standard in Chester County, then we should align with it. All right. Um, then we will um, begin to plan um, with the special education um, supervisors and special education staff. Um, and then at the upcoming curriculum meeting, we will talk with you about the supports and service, the, su the supports that we've put in place um, for those for those classrooms to be able to come um, to school on on Wednesdays, starting in two weeks. Okay. All right, that's all, right. all I have for more discussion. So everyone else is. I have one item we had talked uh, several of us about the current committee structure and perhaps trying to streamline that committee structure. What would next steps look like. We talked about combining the seven committees down to as few as four. I'm just not sure the process that would follow if we wanted to move ahead with that. Yeah, we've got it on the next LNP committee meeting. Okay. Um, of course, 
that's four people, not the entire board. So definitely, right. I am interested in hearing what uh, the opinions are of those who are not on that committee directly. We have a couple of options. I guess currently there are seven defined committees so that each person other than the president and the vice president can chair a committee. Um, we could choose to take the committee names out of our policy altogether so that the committees themselves could be reorganized every year without a committee, um, without a change to the policy that contains the committee names. Um, so that is that would be, I think, the most flexible of options. And perhaps we would just define that there must be a minimum of perhaps four standing committees plus however ad, ad hoc committees are necessary at the time. I think leaving that ad hoc committee uh, verbiage in there is good because I think there's there's going to be points in time where we feel like we need to put a committee together and, and I like the flexibility of being able to call one. Right, that would also allow us to change the verbiage but keep the committees that were just uh, instated until we're ready to move responsibilities around to a new committee structure. It would, it would tie the committee structure to the board's decisions rather than tying it to an annual reorganization, essentially. Yeah, thanks, sounds like a good plan. But any other comments? I, I think the maximum flexibility, because honestly, having to go through a policy change in the readings and right. just to say, hey, we're gonna, we need this committee or we don't, is, is seems, cumbersome and I think the maximum flexibility that you were talking about is is what I would vote for I think right and I chose four because I believe when we were originally talking about how many committees do other districts have four seems to be a pretty common number it's I'll, kind I'll, of a kind of a makes the math easy too because in theory <laughs> you should have a president that's ex officio and eight board members so divisible by four makes it easy I mean, I, I'd even go as flexible, you know, if the board wants 20 committees, they can have 20 committees. If they want two, they want two. You know, I mean, honestly, why are we tying the hands of a future board? Just let them, whatever works best. You know, so. I agree. I think flexibility is the best way to go. As I said last time, um, we'll have a new board before we know it, and they should have the option of dealing with their board as they feel. And Ms. Prophet is correct. Um, there are times you need more committees just because of what's going on and what's occurring. So I think flexibility is, is a good way to go and keep it out of policy to the point that has to go through first and second reading and all of that. Right. When, so, oh, go ahead. Finish. Nope. <laughs> just one more thing that I remembered was uh, we had also considered <clears throat> changing the terminology of committee of the whole and mm -hmm. calling it perhaps a, a board workshop. Is, is that the terminology? Work session. Work, work session. session. Working Thank session, you. so working. we don't get confused with the Thank workshop. Thank you. Yeah, working session. Um, and that would require going through all policies to make sure that there are not other mentions of the Committee of the Whole in other policies. So is, I'm seeing nods. Is anybody opposed to changing the Committee of the Whole terminology? I just feel like it'll be a little more, um, a little easier for the public to understand that it's not a voting session that is just purely a working session, exactly what it is. Correct. Yep. It, yes. Okay. No objection. The cow right, has you. often been joked about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more cows. Awesome. Yes, the cows. cows. Funny you shouldn't mention ad hoc committee. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I totally agree that we, we, should, we should cut down our, our standing committees. Uh, but, you know, over the last several months, you know, I've been really proud of the, the work we've begun about uh, equity in education, um, the, the listening sessions we've had, you know, uh, yesterday with Justin, um, it, it's all been quite wonderful. And uh, what I've learned is I don't know what the heck I'm doing <laughs> most of the time or, or what the problems are. Um, and I know we have we have, uh, you know, suggested that we use a equity lens in, in everything we do um, in each committee, but that may sometimes get kind of, you know, sidetracked with other 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 issues. 
So I was going to recommend, since we're new with this, um, equity in education, uh, perhaps we could have a special committee that focuses just on that, and also, uh, which includes outside members, uh, either from the community or, or experts in the field. I, I think the, the other nice thing, because you and I had chatted a little bit about mm -hmm. this and we talked about, you know, there, is, there are some parts of this that can be parted out to specific committees, like our hiring track for personnel. Um, I think a committee would really help with the accountability and checking in and making sure, you know, that the, that, that committee is able to continue on with that work. Um, kind of like the sleep health committee we had done originally. For, um, for two but, minutes. <laughs> How are you doing with that, John? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody comes to school. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I, I, know, I know we want to kind of get a, a sense of where we're going with even our definition first. Um, but you know that'll take some time, but it will also take some time for us to kind of figure out how we want this committee to work. So I, I, th think, I think starting it now, mm -hmm. the process, not, not so much meeting now, mm -hmm. but the process of organizing it uh, with, again, members of the community and, and experts. Yeah, and I think that's key, the members of the community. We, we've talked about after we had these listening sessions, how do we continue to bring in uh, the voices of our community? And I think that's a really um, great opportunity. And I don't know if, you know, we have something like we have representatives from each of the from each of the schools, maybe each of the uh, the PTAs and PTOs or something like that, just to kind of continue to bring that message forward um, to the board. I'm, um, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for that. And I don't even know how how this would work as, as far as a school board committee, which brings in outsiders per se. You know. So we what, did what the precedent is yeah. how it works how it, how how you figure out who's on the committee. I don't we I don't know if we'd want to relate this to like the feasibility study where we you know had you know community representatives. We also had township res representatives. So I don't know if, you know if we include um, individuals from the community that are not involved in the school district. Um, I think you know it's just, really more of a task force then than really than a yeah. committee. You know that's what we called it also with the sleep health. That's how you kind of incorporate all those different groups, I think, as you sort of term it something different. So I don't really know if it- I just think you're right, John, in the structure and you don't want to create something that's unwieldy, right? As you try to gather all the- Yeah, exactly. Potential inputs together. And, you know, maybe we could just talk about it next, next Monday. Um, you know, it, an ad hoc committee is technically, you know, organized by the president, I think, in, in the, <laughs> according, to the, according to the policy, <clears throat> you call it, but, you know, I think we can- Kind of get the the nuts and bolts figured out in in LMP. Yeah, and to that, I'm honestly not sure that we needed to vote to ratify the committee appointments under current policy. This is why you're an LMP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just want to say I think what you guys are talking about makes a lot of sense, and I'd love to see the equity continue on with you know so it doesn't become diluted out and bring in the outside help in some way. So. I would be fully supportive of the president forming that committee and then you guys figuring out how to structure it, but you know, and everybody, but I don't mean you guys, but. If we want to go to this like really, really flexible committee structure, should we require that the full board vote so that if somebody objects to what the president has put forward, they have an opportunity to voice that objection? I'm fine with whatever you guys want to do. Thoughts? They sound like vexing questions for LMP. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, when, we oh, do talk about, when we talk about this at more length at LMP, can we also um, just revisit the community participation? I do think that's actually a common construct in some school districts where they have um, stakeholders, external, you know, whether it be parents or students or community members as part of some of the committees. I don't think it would be out of totally out of the ordinary. I agree. And it may be that our current policy allows that. I, I would have to double check the wording. Because I think it specifically says like a minimum of board members. I don't know that it specifies. That it excludes anybody. Right, exactly. I don't know if it excludes. Right, it, it strictly says it can't be more than um, a quorum of board members in one committee. That's the only exclusion. Um, it's just like the feasibility study. Um, it could be set up with however many stakeholders um, 
the group would, would care to have, but it cannot be more than a quorum of board members involved mm -hmm. in the committee. Let me know if we need to get more mugs for finance committee, Melissa. <laughs> All right, what the plans That's are. right, where are those mugs? <laughs> that no one has. <laughs> I left us at home. I oh, know. I forgot we were meeting in person. You only have to buy four. Mr. Friel. I know, I know. Um, no, I, I'm not commenting on the behavior. <laughs> um, <laughs> Barry, if you're out there, drive them up. Um, Mr. Friel, wait, I, I did get feedback. When you talk, could you speak directly into the microphone? People want to hear what you have to say. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I will do that in the future. What was that about the wow. mugs? All right, um, any other board discussion? Yeah, I have something else. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I've been busy this month. <laughs> um, you know, what, whatever we do with bringing kids back into the classroom, uh, we're gonna have a lot of kids struggling. Uh, that's, 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 you know, self-evident. Um, so I know you guys are probably thinking about uh, ESY right now, uh, and I would suggest that we kind of broaden you know, invitations to that um, and also, you know, think of ways to expand it uh, so that our kids can have a time to catch up. And so I am not sure if Mrs. Stutzman's committee is prepared to talk about that this month, but um, that is definitely, we've already begun to work on that um, with the building level administrators on not just ESY for special education students, but for um, all of our students that that really struggled this year. So stay tuned, That's gonna, that information is gonna come through Mrs. Stutzman's committee. One Sorry. last thing for Mrs. Stutzman, your committee. See how popular you are? So I just have a question. Oh yeah, um, go ahead. Can we expand the time of ESY or is that like contractual, how's that work? Um, Dr. Marquini is going to have more on, on that. He was just um, consulting. They just had their, their big um, SEAC meeting. Um, and so he'll have more of that for pupil services, or we can do it as part of curriculum. Well, we, we've combined them, so we'll probably do that part as curriculum. Um, and so we'll talk about both regular ed and special ed at that meeting. Okay. Okay. I just think we can, we can maximize as much of the summer um, to help our kids out. I think that would be best. Mm -hmm. Some schools are, have already started after school programs um, with their, their CARES money, so there's, there's options. Okay. My question has to do with, uh, you had mentioned earlier, surveys going out about uh, what cyber might look like for next year. And I guess my question for the committee is you guys think about what the models like might look like. Are you assuming that by the fall uh, we'll be in a position with relaxed distancing, vaccine distribution, the whole works, that you would have uh, students who wanted to be in school in five days a week? Because it seems like the mixture of five days a week versus cyber needing some kind of an asynchronous day is something that we struggle right now with in terms of instructional models. So are you guys taking, I would, I would suggest you take that into account as you think about what the model might look like in the fall. Yeah, we think you know, is, uh, it's all or none. You know, either you're yeah. in cyber or you're in once once things yeah, come down. Yeah, this is if you're interested in cyber academy, assuming five days a week, assuming we're going back to school as normal next okay. year, and most or all kids, you know, would be normally planning to go five days a week. Okay. There is now going to be the option for kids to sign up for cyber academy instead of going physically to school. And what would that look like is what the teams are starting to put together. Okay, Doctor, awesome. please feel free to jump in if I misspoke on anything. Good job, Mrs. Stutzman. Thank you. You're welcome. So I have uh, one thing I just wanted to bring up and I'm not sure where, what a committee it would fall under, but, and it, and it kind of sparked out of the, like some of those equity meetings about the community outreach and a lot of these mental health issues we're hearing with the kids that are home and isolated <laughs> is how are we building back the, you know, I, I understand the academic catch up, but how are we doing the social catch up and the, the community outreach catch up with the kids? Are there things that we can add to the summer program that are not academic, that are more 
like, you know, come see your friends again, come socialize again. And, and even with cyber, how do these kids become part of the community so we don't have the isolation and the mental health issues? I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what we can do there, but I recognize it as an issue that if we could, the same way we're trying to fix the academic behind, is there an outreach we can do to try to bring community days or with kids in to socialize them and, and families too. I think it, it's the whole community in general, but focusing on the kids obviously. So don't know where that belongs, if it's maybe part of the outreach of equity or if it's curriculum and people services. I, I just think it's something we should be, if there's a program or somebody's doing something, we should look for it. It's certainly um, a concern that our guidance counselors have um, for our students returning and, and thinking about when our students can return, when the students that um, have been virtual are able to return, um, that time is going to have to be spent with students coming back um, to school and the adjustments. And um, I don't even know if we can anticipate the challenges that are going to face us once students are able to return. So um, time is gonna have to be spent planning for that. Um, and I know that this is a, a concern that guidance counselors are already expressing. Yeah, just that's good. I just go back to like corporate team building and retreats and things that are meant to build, you know, bring ice people breakers. together, icebreakers. You kind of maybe have to do a little more of that with the kids. Well, you know, we all we do have those summer um, programs that kids can sign up for. I don't know how well attended those are, but maybe that is something to consider expanding. What did um, we have like a fishing club or? Yeah, all was, kinds of clubs yeah. of all like. Fishing is many the most different popular. types, and yeah, some of them are hard to get into, apparently, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess maybe I don't, I, I don't know, if sure if that's pupil services or if it's I think that falls in pupil services, right? The clubs. The, well, the, however, uh, it is. That's we Lydia's committee also. That's Mrs. That. Stutzman's committee also. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You're going to be very it busy. <laughs> Dr. Soto runs Gosh. the enrichment program. I am not people services for what it's worth. No, your curriculum. Curriculum. I'm sorry. Oh, that, I thought that, you said it was people services. No, that falls under um, nope. curriculum, Mrs. Stutzman. See what happens <laughs> when you don't come in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could be there in person. She's definitely glaring at you. <laughs> All right. Any more board discussion? No. Okay. All right. Item 11, old business. Uh, I'm, oh, sorry. This is Crumrine. No old business this evening. Okay. <laughs> All right. Item 12, new business, approval of personnel matters. 12.1, uh, the board will make a motion to approve the following personnel matters, which are items 12.2 through 12.12 .12 as action consent items. Any approval of appointment of personnel under these action consent items is expressly made contingent upon the district's ability to conduct and or participate in the, rel uh, the related program and or activity in the light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. All right, popcorn, Mr. Deal. <laughs> Read. <laughs> We're not popcorn reading? <sighs> All right. Uh, in the event the district schools are one, closed or providing modified programming, two, unable to conduct or participate in programs or activities due to the direction or recommendations of outside agencies, including but not limited to the Pennsylvania Department of Education, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, the Governor's Office, the Chester County Health Department, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the, Pe the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association, et cetera or three, the district administration determines not to conduct and or participate in any program or activity to ensure the safety of students, staff, and the community. The district shall not be liable to compensate personnel appointed herein for such programs and or activities. In the event some programs and activities are conducted and or held on a limited basis, compensation for personnel shall be paid on a pro rata basis com commensurate with the percentage of the program season activity that was held and during which students participated. The decision to cancel, discontinue, and or alter programs and activities shall be at the exclusive discretion of the district administration as previously authorized by the board pursuant to the district's health and safety plan. All right. All right. 
uh, the board will make a motion to approve the following personnel matters, which are items 12.2 through 12.12 .12 as action consent items. So Sorry, all I can think about is uh, Mrs. DiMarino is saying I need to slow down. <laughs> yes. So I'm Actually, trying that to read one you slowly. Didn't have, yeah, not that one. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, Mrs. DiMarino, do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Booth, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I do believe we have retirements. Okay. All right. Don't want to miss anyone. <sighs> okay. Item 13. I just can't catch my breath. Whew. New business. 13.1, approval of the reaffirmation of local board procedures, board governance standards, and code of conduct. Uh, approval of the reaffirmation of local board procedures, board governance standards, and code of conduct as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Booth, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Deal, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item 13.2, approval of phased school and athletics reopening health and safety plan updates. Approval of the phased school and athletics reopening health and safety plan updates as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Uh, Mr. Friel, do I have a second? Second. second. Uh, Mr. DeFort, any discussion? I did just want to add, you know, we're, we're, the update is primarily for the new antigen tests. And, uh, you know, I've been looking at them and they're, it's a, it's a very good test. Uh, mm -hmm. So people should feel pretty confident. Uh, if it says you're negative, it's 95% chance that you are negative. If it says you're positive, it's a good 95% 95, 95 chance that, that you are positive. So it's, 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 we should really take advantage of it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's a very good move. Mm -hmm. Good opportunity. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item 13.3, approval of the proposed instructional changes for the middle school and high school. Approval of the proposed instructional changes for the middle school and high school as recommended by the Curriculum and Instruction Committee at the January 4th, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Uh, Mrs. DiMarino, do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Booth, uh, any discussion? I did. Uh, I want to make a statement if everyone's okay. Um, so I just wanted to make this statement before we move on this vote. Um, I was fortunate enough to visit um, almost all of the buildings in the past month or so, as many of our board members were able to. Um, I am coming for North Coventry and East Vincent this Friday. Um, I unfortunately had to reschedule because my home elementary school was closed this past Friday. Um, the board has been very respectful of the limited visitor policy. So I was really pleased when Dr. Lloyd invited us to come visit. Um, I will say, though, I didn't need to visit these buildings to see what rock stars our teachers are. Uh, I am fortunate enough to see this uh, every week with my own children. I also hear from the community all the time how much they love their teachers or how their teacher has gone above and beyond. Uh, this is a really challenging year, one we've never seen before, and our wonderful teachers have risen to the occasion, and they've jumped through hoops just to ensure our students have some semblance of a normal year. I do want to address something that has been weighing on me. There is this misconception that the board does not care about our teachers. I'm constantly told that I need to not take this personally, but at the end of the day, I do. All nine of us could have taken the easy route when the pandemic started. We all have personal lives, we all have commitments, and for some, 2020 has been devastating, not to mention incredibly stressful and emotionally draining. There is no one on this board who has not had to make tremendous sacrifices to be able to continue to serve this district the way we are. If you look at other districts, school board directors are dropping like flies. This burden is just too much to bear, but all nine of us have chosen to remain. And many of you know, I have three young children, one who is severely disabled and whose care is a full-time job, but I am still here, some weeks putting more than 40 hours in just to make sure this district can run smoothly under the direction of a cohesive board. So why are we committing so much time for so little pay? Uh, it's definitely not because we enjoy getting ripped apart over email or social media or on the phone. Um, we are willingly volunteering our time because we care. We want to make sure our students and our staff are properly cared for. 
Of course, what we do cannot be compared with the amount of time and energy that Dr. Lloyd commits. I don't know anyone else who will sit in her office until 11 o'clock at night just to ensure every email has been answered on top of everything else she has done that day. Uh, and I hate to break it to you all, but if you've been teaching in this district for over 13 years, then you were here when I went here. And my hope is that you will stay <laughs> here as my own children come through. In a few years, we will look back at this point in time as a minor bump in the road. We will have found ways to develop public education and make it even better than ever. The ask that the board made was to find ways for additional in-person education. We know our students are struggling educationally and emotionally. We also know our teachers are going above and beyond to try to reach them, but that this is incredibly hard in this virtual world. We recognize that nothing beats a five-day in-person education for most of our students. We also recognize that that's not possible. I keep hearing about other districts or private schools that are operating five days a week, and I think that's great. But I think there are some key factors that are missing, like how it's actually going. It's not my role to speak on other school districts, but I have been talking with many, and unfortunately, there is no perfect model right now. All of our students are struggling. But we would be remiss not to make a change when it is safe. As Dr. Lloyd and I continue to watch the projections, any chances of change continue to shift because we will not be making changes until we are within the moderate range for three weeks. We would be lucky to make any changes in March at this point. I do believe that once the vaccine has rolled out to our teachers and our community more, numbers will start to go down and restrictions will lessen. I do have hopes that we will get to five-day week in-person instruction at some point this school year, and it is important for us to plan for this. Now bear with me, I am a history major. Okay. Benjamin Franklin once said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. It is within this board's responsibilities to ask our administration to prepare for more in-person education. We agree that a gradual approach is best for all, but like we saw at the beginning of the school year, plans can change and will change to what is needed. I anticipate we will have to change again, and I welcome all change for the better. So I'm just asking to please take a deep breath with me, parents and teachers. We are about halfway through this school year. We will get through this together. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I encourage each of our teachers in our buildings to continue working with our students to fit their needs. And parents, please remember your teacher, your principal is only a phone call or email away, and they have your students' best interests at heart and will continue to work with you. Any other discussion? We're looking for discussion now. Mm -hmm. So I, I struggle with this one because I think you know, the high school is obvious, it's easy, it's a four day, it's the middle school and the half day that I just wonder if the juice is worth the squeeze. So I struggle with, you know, the feedback we've been getting from some people and some teachers and some parents, and there's this, it's just a split on this issue. And is two days a month of a half a day schedule, is it, is it meaningful, right? Where, I'm, I'm wanting to plan for five day a week. I'd like to see as soon as it's safe, our kids go back to regular five day school. I don't know when that or if that will be. Um, but, but that's my only concern here is on the middle school plan, on the half day, and I'm pretty agnostic about it. I can be persuaded. I just am, I'm just wondering if it's really meaningful, incremental for what it, the schedule change. So that, that's my question that I have as I enter this vote. I'd love to just quickly share that I um, went into this pretty similarly to Paul's thinking and relatively agnostic, taking your guidance as far as um, the administration, administration's guidance as far as what's best to answer the charge that was given around how do we continue to make improvements where we see the ability to do so, get the kids more time with their teachers, um, work on some of the numbers that we've seen falling drastically um, in middle school especially. And to uh, Leslie's point, there is not a win-win situation right here available to us right now. So I think what this is is uh, recognizing that getting kids with their teachers more, more time with teachers synchronously can hopefully be a bit of an answer and an interim step until the five day. To be honest, it wasn't until I really thought about the fact that the majority of our middle school kids have chosen to be in person um, 
and that this gives them more addition, you know, additional time with their teachers, whether it be that half day in person twice a month or the additional synchronous time for that half day. So every Wednesday, you're going to have more synchronous time with your teachers. Um, but then in addition to that, uh, with the majority of them choosing to be in person, it feels like the right adjustment. Lastly, we were asking, and I would love the teachers to know this, that we definitely have been asking probing hard questions of administration around what can we do to also support you in in properly being able to be able to handle this schedule. Um, we asked uh, for information about what is your current planning time, what type of planning time did you have before, uh, and there there are slight differences. It's instead of being all together, it will be spread out. Um, but I do feel like, given the fact that it's the majority of the kids choosing to go in person, that this might be a good next step. I am with you, Paul, that I don't have a passionate point of view either way, and I'm therefore taking the recommendation of um, the experts around how do we start to move the needle when we can, when things get better from a health perspective in our community. For the high school, I'm not there for the very opposite reason, right? Um, that just as you said, but for middle school, I am. And just to clarify, um, Mr. Yuhas earlier stated that this would begin in the middle of a marking period, but we don't have a set start date. It's really dependent on coming out of substantial for three weeks. That's what we had, or what was discussed at the committee. That's still the case, correct? Okay. So yes. we don't know yet. It just gives you advance advance warning, if it looks like we're trending in that direction, what model we would begin to think about. Correct. Well, I would just like to um, make a statement supporting Leslie's statement. Um, this has been an extraordinary year for everyone, and I think our staff has responded in an extraordinary manner. And I think this board has done the same thing. We all know we spend countless hours, more than then the public is aware, and we certainly are concerned with the pressure our staff is suffering, but everybody does have to pull together. It is an extraordinary year, and we expect extraordinary things of everyone. I see this as a move, a step forward. We have to start moving forward at some point in time, and I see as incremental as it is, um, baby steps have to be taken before we can even move forward. So I am also um, in favor of the administration's recommendation. They are the professionals. We do have to move forward, but that in no way is, is a response that I would hope that our staff thinks that we are not approving of their great sacrifice as, we, as everyone has made. It is an extraordinary year, and we are very proud of the extraordinary response by all of our staff. Our children love their staff, and the more time they get with their staff, um, I think is better. We are here to serve our students, and so is our staff. And they have responded brilliantly, and I'm sure they will respond brilliantly going forward. We will make accommodations where we can and when we can, but we need to start moving forward. Therefore, I am, I am in favor of the administration's recommendation to start these small steps. And as you both just mentioned, we aren't even sure exactly when that will occur. But without a move forward, we won't move anywhere. That's, thank you. I just have uh, just one comment. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm in favor of this. My only concern is how long do we wait to see if it's successful, right? I mean, do we just move forward with it and power through it or because we're presenting this sort of as this is the answer, mm -hmm. but but it may not be the answer. Sorry, mm -hmm. so but it may not be the answer. So I'm just wondering yeah. how long do we wait until we determine if this is successful or not? So I know I know from my perspective, my hope is that um, by the time this gets implemented, we will be having more, we will have more vaccines in the community. We will start be starting to talk about. Uh, what it looks like for five-day, because recommendations will be changing from the health department. 
Um, I don't foresee this as a long-term solution. I see this as a stepping stone, as Melissa said, into uh, gradually getting our students back into the building. I anticipate um, that once we get into the moderate range, more um, students are going to come back to school um, at the, the middle school. I also um, am hearing conversations um, with the health department about after the vaccine is out, um, then they will be looking to um, relax the six feet. I mean, we're not there. Yeah. Um, and until the health department comes out and, and says that I'm not, I'm not <laughs> suggesting that we even would attempt that. Um, but we will only have three months of school left at that point. So um, I, I can't, just like everything, I think we'll just continue to adjust mm -hmm. as we go. You know, we could start out with one schedule um, and then realize within a couple of weeks that schedule's not working and they, they create another schedule for it. So we won't know unless we try. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so we did hear the uh, teacher's statement opposing going to a half day synchronous for the middle school. Um, what we did not hear on tonight's call was any community input on the, the parent and ch student perspective. I know that we have received some emails expressing that parents and students are in favor of keeping asynchronous Wednesdays. But um, what seemed to me very interesting in some of the Facebook comments was the inference that it was because the children would like to sleep in. So if that's true, then we should be, you know, revisiting our sleep health task force. <laughs> and that's, that's well, an entirely different discussion. Different topic, but that discussion will be coming up. Yeah, so I mean, I think we should take this opportunity to alert parents that if, if your child is saying that they want to keep their asynchronous Wednesdays because they get to sleep in, perhaps, perhaps it's worth understanding completely what that feedback is about and whether they think they would do better in school if they always started later. Um, but the other thing that I think others have said that I would like to reiterate, I believe also, is this is a stepping stone. This is a plan, and we, we do need to plan. We were taken by surprise with the pandemic and how quickly we had to react to that. We are not going to be taken by surprise by the pandemic going away. You know, we, we have the opportunity to plan. It's important that we do a plan, and I have not heard of a different stepping stone plan other than this that would get us back to five day a week instruction. So therefore, I think this is the best one to go for. And then uh, one more thing about the high school schedule. Uh, it does depend, I think, on not too many students coming back from cyber school. So what would be the number? So right now it says 51% attending virtually. If some of them wanted to come back once we have all blended students attending in person, what would be the cutoff there? So we're, we're now up to 59% attending um, virtually. Um, there are d dates when um, folks need to um, let the principal, the guidance counselors know that they're coming back so that we're sure that we have space. And if we need to, we can relocate classrooms. We can relocate classrooms to bigger rooms to make sure that we're we're maintaining. So you don't think we would run into a situation where a whole lot of students would want to come back once they heard that they could come back four days, and suddenly we have to say no to some of them? We're not anticipating that. Not, we're not anticipating that right now. That might might change, but at the moment, more students are leaving. <laughs> to go to virtual okay. every week. Every time we send out a letter, it seems like more students move to, to virtual. So my only ask for that is if um, the administration team at the high school can keep an eye on that. And if we feel like we need to go back to the drawing board, I mean, we've already shown that you have the authority to make those decisions if something were to come up. But um, if we need to go back to the drawing board, it's always good to be able to have time to plan, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think in the spirit of contingency planning, if, the vaccine starts getting distributed and we start seeing that, you're gonna to have to make a call either to hold dates, like you can't go back before and then be able to switch that up. I mean, and 
you know, and I, I would just say, because I, I mean, I hear everybody's, I'm probably, I'm, I, I know I'm in the minority on the middle school thing here a little bit, but um, if there's extra support we need to put in place for the middle school, for the planning, for the teachers, I, I think, you know, come ask us for that support. If, it, if, it, if it's a temporary thing, I think you'll find the support here to support our teachers to do that. And, you know, like I said, my, my no on this is, is a soft no, just because I just, again, not sure the juice is worth the squeeze and a little concerned about the routine of students, students at home who are using those Wednesdays for whatever reason and interrupting that routine, are we gonna get the benefit for the half day, right? So, I, you know, I said my piece on that, but support and, you know, what do we need to help our teachers as this goes forward for those, those planning and those Wednesdays, do we need additional resources? What are they? And please come to us with that. So it's interesting you should mention that because actually Dr. Melnozak asked uh, one of our kindergarten teachers that it was either you or it was me. I think it was you. What, what's the question? What, uh, what need? support they needed. Yeah, they need, new, new, uh, they need substitutes. Substitutes, so <laughs> I Which think that was, that was the key thing. So if you want to substitute, Mr. Friel, I think it is, um, <laughs> what is it, ESS? I'm not sure the parents would want ESS. that. <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, we, you, know, we're, you know, visitors are not allowed because I think there would be such an influx of people who want to help during this time, but mm -hmm. we just can't get them in. But I think the other thing that um, this teacher said that uh, what was, was striking for me was to acknowledge the fact that um, our teachers are, you know, working late into the evenings and they are doing a lot of work with us. And I, I, I tried to relay that across in my statement. Um, you know, we, we can't thank you all enough for everything that you're doing. You are jumping through hoops, like I said, um, and, and we appreciate all that. I think, you know, as we talked about, this is a stepping stone and that we don't anticipate this uh, for very long. Um, and, and, you know, we all hope for five day week in, in person instruction, but we've just got to, we've got to make sure it's safe before we do it. One additional thing I would like to say in, in all this discussion, uh, I hate to see the loss of our public school students in the high school. It's going to, I think, really affect the high school community for quite a while as more and more leave. So as often as we can realign what goes on in the high school, I think the better we are, the sooner we can get some of our students back in. It may take realigning classrooms, et cetera, but I would certainly like to encourage students to come back to school. I, I have neighbors who chose to go um, virtual to other cyber academies, but fully intend to come back to the school as soon as they can. So I would like to be able to encourage that. Again, as soon as we can do that safely, and uh, Dr. Lloyd's going to have to jump through hoops continually to do that, but I'd hate to see the loss of our um, high school community through this. And um, kids who are in the, uh, students who are in the middle of their high school career, they might not come back, and I find that to be rather sad. So I don't want to see that occur, and I would like to mitigate that as much as possible. We have a, we've had a great school community, and we're all trying to make it even better, so I would hate to see it to lose maybe 50% of that high school community that's there now. I'm sure in two or three years that won't occur, but I'm a little concerned for next year. Uh, with, we all know going to the high school, it's like a ghost city. I mean, it's really, mm -hmm. really kind of striking to go through that high school, um, a place that's usually such so full of activity um, to be in a situation like that. So I would certainly hope that we find a way to encourage those students to come back as quickly as it is safe. And I'm hoping those vaccines roll out really quick and people feel, start to feel safety back in their lives. So I, I was just thinking about that when we were talking about the high school. And I just had to say that I, I firmly believe in public education and, and I hate to see the destruction of that high school community. So I'll be quiet. <laughs> I have to breathe anyway. You know, during this conversation, during this conversation, I think I've changed my vote like six or seven times because <laughs> everything everybody has said, I believe in. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, I'm starting to get an ulcer. <laughs> uh, all right, um, do you want me to just call the vote then? <laughs> Does that make you feel better? I do. No. Um, so you know, 
I agree with everybody. You know, you know, Paul, your comments about you know what are we getting if we go to half a day synchronous, you know, is a good point too. Um, you know, but visiting these elementary schools and 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 talking to the teachers, it's the 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 fair, first thing they said when I asked what do you need is their Wednesdays. So. Um, it really, you know, one one teacher I was almost looked panicked when when we talked about taking it away, uh, but those numbers last week, you know, of our students was just atrocious. Um, so there we got that. So back and forth, back and forth. I think, you know, for me, it's it's I have a personal uh, understanding of working too much. Um, you know, several years back, I was working like a, a dog. <laughs> Uh, working in an emergency hospital, uh, working at a private practice. I kept doing more and more and more, and eventually I crashed. So I, I worry about that crash, because when I crashed, I, w I was not a, the best veterinarian I could be. Uh, and I worry that if our teachers crash, the same is gonna happen to them. High school, you know, you know I love that plan. It's the middle school though, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of against, so um, that's my, my personal addition. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, motion passes. All right, item 13.4, approval of the Committee of the Whole and School Board Director meeting dates for 2021-22. Uh, approval of the Committee of the Whole and School Board meeting dates for 2021-22 as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Mrs. Booth, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 13.5, approval of an accelerated budget opt-out resolution certifying tax uh, rate within a inflation index 2021-22 fiscal year. Approval of an accelerated budget opt-out resolution certifying tax rate within inflation index 2021-22 fiscal year as presented. The approval of this resolution is being recommended by the Finance Committee from the January 4th, 2021 Committee of the Whole Meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Friel, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Deal, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 13.6, approval of a memorandum of understanding between the Chester County Health Department and ONJ Roberts School District. Approval of a memorandum of understanding between the Chester County Health Department and ONJ Roberts School District as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Uh, Mrs. DiMarino, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item 13.7, approval of confidential settlement agreement and release. Approval of confidential settlement agreement and release as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Uh, Dr. Melnizak, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item 13.8, approval to establish a student activity, approval to establish a student activity uh, club in accordance with the provisions of section 511 of the Pennsylvania School Code and School Board Re Regulation 122A and or 122B as presented. This approval also provides for the establishment of accounts within the student activity accounting system when applicable. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Mrs. Booth, any discussion? Uh, I just wanted to say this is for the tech pack. Uh, if you guys haven't checked them out, they are doing a lot of really cool work. Um, just a little plug for them. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Um, 13.9, approval of student activity club advisors and student officers. Approval of student activity club advisors and student officers in accordance with the provisions of section 511 of the Pennsylvania School Code for the 2021 school year as presented. Uh, do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Mrs. DeMarino, do I have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. DeFore, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 1310, approval of designation of agent resolution for COVID-19 disaster. Uh, Dr. DR, 4506, it's getting late. Uh, approval of designation <laughs> of agent resolution for COVID-19 disaster, DR 4506, for the approval of obtaining financial assistance under the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistant Act, Assistance Act as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Booth, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Friel, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. 13.11, approval for membership in Keystone Purchasing Network uh, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement or Purchasing Program. Approval for membership in Keystone Purchasing Network uh, Cooperative Purchasing Program as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Deal, do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Booth, any discussion? Uh, usually I just add that this does save us money many times. If uh, Mrs. Carmine would like to join in on that, we do use this opportunity often and it's always been a good program and it will continue to be so. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, 13.12, approval ratification of professional services and or maintenance agreements. Approval ratification of professional services and or maintenance agreements as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. DeFore, do I have a second? Second. second. Sorry, who was that? Mr. Friel, sorry. Uh, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, item 14, public comment. Uh, Information proposals and statements from individuals or delegations pertaining to any item. Speakers are to indicate your name and township of residence. Speakers will be limited to not more than three minutes. Please understand that this is not a time for dialogue with the board. Rather, the board will listen to all comments and consider them in future deliberations. And then just a reminder, if you have any questions for the school board, you can also email us at schoolboardmembers at ojrsd.net and we will, you will receive a written response. Um, just a guideline for anyone that would like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand function when it is your turn to speak. And please uh, don't forget to speak your, uh, to state your name and township of residence. Madam President, there is no public comment. Hold on, we just got one. Ms. McCreary, you are Unmuted. Hi, hi um, Heather McCreary, East Coventry Township. I think I'd just like to make a comment. Thank you for starting the work on the new website. Um, it, it does seem a little bit easier to navigate. It still has some tweaks. Um, I would ask that on behalf of the public that you, the board, advocate on behalf of the students and parents as stakeholders. And I think more transparency would be really helpful, like the data tables, broken down between students and staff in each building. I did notice on other websites in Chester County that is broken down that way. And we had some heated community debate today. I don't know where everybody else is besides me tonight, but I think you guys have to try to find a way to get these kids back, whether they have to make a choice between cyber or in person, but the community, the students and the parents want to be back in school as close to five days a week as possible. And I think, Mr. Friel, you brought up about other things for these students. It's not too early to start thinking about things for the seniors. They have lost so much between last year and this year. Uh, something, are we having a prom? How are we going to do that? What does graduation look like? The end of the year is going to be, be here before we know it. And I think that there needs to be more focus on the high school kids, like Mrs. Booth said. We need to make these children feel a part of our community. The seniors will have lost almost a year and a half by the time we get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McCurry. You bring up some good points uh, for our seniors, and I'm sure that Mr. Uh, Richardson is definitely working on that for our seniors. Any more public comment? Madam President, that's the end of public comment. Okay. All right. Item 15, board discussion and follow-up. Any more follow-up than we already had? I, I did just have, you know, something smaller. <laughs> so, uh, 
you know, let me ask Dr. Lloyd some questions before I, I comment to make sure I don't see the wrong thing. We have not had any in-school transmission of COVID. In school, not including, you know, sports and stuff. So uh, we have not had, you mean link transmission? Link, sorry, sorry, link. Right, and so not in, within the classroom. We have not had link transmission within the classroom. But we have had link in extracurricular activities. We have had link transmission in, in athletics. And during that time when the, the, the athletes came back positive, we had to close down the entire school. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I, I think we really need to, you know, reassess, you know, extracurricular activities and how it affects everybody else. I mean, we, we've just been talking about getting kids back into school and, oh, but, oh, thank you, Mr. Helper. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been talking about getting kids back in school, um, but yet we have this, you know, this, you know, this group, this, this, uh, what I'm trying to say, we have students that are kind of at higher risk to throw off our numbers. Um, you know, in school, I'm sure they, they stay separate and, and are, I mean, they are, they're doing a great job, students. But when you're like on top of some guy in, on a wrestling mat, match, you know, you know, I don't care what you're wearing. Maybe. So we, I think we, you know, you know, Madam President had some suggestions about, uh, you know, what we could do to keep sports but also to, you know, take them out of the equation as far as closing the school down. So this was something that another school district had mentioned that they had asked their athletes to be virtual. I don't, I don't know if you can do that. I was just reiterating what another school district um, had said that they were doing so that if, if our athletes um, had link transmissions, it, because they're virtual, it wouldn't tie into the numbers. Yeah, mo mostly the, the, you know, the, when, when, uh, when CHOP had that, you know, hierarchy of, of sports, you know, which is, you know, going to be higher risk for transmission versus lower risk. So, you know, back in the fall was football. Now it's maybe wrestling, basketball for high. You know, track is still very low. I don't have an answer, obviously, but that's just something I'm, I was thinking about and maybe we could digest it for a little bit. Do we have any linked transmission other than that wrestling incident? I, I, has there been another team? Not to my knowledge. Okay. We had another team quarantined, but not to my knowledge. Hmm. Any other more discussion? No, it's it's interesting, but you know, it's uh, I don't I don't know how you do it though, right? Yeah. I, I mean, voluntarily, if the if they were virtual and then it wouldn't count, it would be good. So you ask, can you can you but can you legitimately ask high risk sports to be virtual? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It feels like a, a slippery slope there. And I, I don't want to pull you know in person education away from a student that needs it. But but yeah, but there is if that. If that if that happens again or that goes there, we should probably revisit this discussion. Yeah, hopefully it's just a once and done. But yeah, but it hopefully is, it is it is a, a sore spot that we have. Um, you know, we don't want to close the entire school down just because of a certain cohort. And, and just to clarify, no one's trying to take anything away from anyone. It's just because of these restrictions and these mandates we've got to follow right now because of how strict they are with with the numbers. That's the only reason we're really talking about this is how do we oh, yeah. Yeah. keep school from not shutting down. Yeah, agreed. Well, I, totally. think, I think it is worth reiterating that the board supports the health and safety measures that are in place, the masking of all the students and the, the teachers, making sure that people distance six feet, making sure that they wash their hands often. Those are all things that we support and are, are very much in favor of everybody cooperating with so that they keep everyone else who is in our school healthy. Because right now, um, it, it is very stressful not to know on any given day if we're going to have another positive in a school and then it has to be shut down the following day. That is, that is stressful and heartbreaking for everyone. So it's, you know, it is what it is, but the board very much 
is in favor of the, the teachers and the students and the community all supporting those initiatives. So we'll revisit if need be. Okay. Leslie, Thanks. if you don't mind, I'd just like to quickly just reiterate what you shared. I think you did a beautiful job in the beginning of the conversation about the middle school and to um, just point out to those who have sent in frustration type emails around not having more time or that the, what I wouldn't want is the comment that, you know, Mr. Yuha's comment or the comment about the feedback we've gotten from the teachers to turn on them as being the reason we're having this discussion because um, I'm a huge fan and cheerleader of our teaching staff. They're the most amazing in my opinion. Um, I will support them in any way that I can. So Paul's question, and I think I asked at the last meeting of what can we do to support what they need? I think that, that conversation just still needs to be bubbled up to us so that we can all work together to figure out the best scenario. But I want to reiterate and end hopefully on, you said it much better than I am, I'm not feeling very well, <laughs> but uh, they are doing such an amazing job through all of this. And uh, I can think I can speak for everyone on the board, but I know I feel uh, genuinely appreciative of everything our teachers have done. So I wanted to thank them publicly. And you know, I just want to say one tiny thing. I also think we need to thank the guidance counselors too. I know they're working really and hard. And our school nurses. And, mm -hmm. and, and mental health professionals as yes. well, all of them. Yeah, you're right, they really are. <laughs> it's really hard. I know hard. that the, at the high school, and maybe um, someone who's listening to this might want this information, but the high school, the mental health counselors are w meeting with students who want to, to talk about their, some of their struggles and some of the things they're going through. And so if there are students that want to meet with someone that's going on in groups now. So, and they're, they're doing that at the elementary schools yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely reach out for help if yeah. you need it, because there's a lot of support there. Yep. And, and mental health also for our, our, our staff. Um, you know, there's, not, there's nothing in, in, the, in the school itself where they can go to, but hopefully our insurance will, will cover, you know, lots of the, you know, uh, different types of assistance, counseling, you know, I, I found that, you know, extremely important to get through really difficult situations. So I, I encourage anybody who's on the verge or just just to talk to somebody. So, yeah. And again, you know, ditto to everything. Yeah, I think it's been really nice, not just the teachers, but the whole staff the, from, you know, our, 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 our teamsters, our bus drivers, our kitchen staff, you know, everybody's kind of coming together to make this work. And it's, it's very imperfect and it's, it's just, you know, it's not there. Um, it's so much out of our control. But, but to, to, I think, you know, like Kathy and Lydia's point on and, and bringing support for it is, is I definitely like to see us come back on the mental health issues and the community for the kids, like how do we bring them together you know, either in the next board meeting or the next, uh, I don't know what committee it belongs on, but a more like pull some data around this and, and, and maybe a little bit more forward thinking of what can programs. I, can I direct can, it to a committee? I think it would fall under people's services if we're going to talk about mental health. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Happy. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, thank you. Yeah. So I think that's a great, you know, thing that we should kind of maybe bubble up a little in, in more detail and deeper. I will say that we have added a lot of supports this past year for mental health, um, maybe just sharing more of that again um, and then kind of brainstorming what else we can do. Yeah, and we'll have to talk about when to discuss this because right now Pupil Services doesn't have a meeting for a while, so. We, we, yeah, we canceled the 25th to add curriculum in there. Yeah, so. so um, if they were combined, you could do it. <laughs> the problem with bringing the kids together is we gotta be able to bring the kids together. Right, so yeah. we've got yep. some time to map it out, so. Okay, I'll work on that. I had a thought that has, yeah, no, no uh, impact on how, how I change my opinions or my vote, but uh, none of us who got into education originally thought of these children as little germ factories. I think during this pandemic, it's easy to fall into the trap of considering them as germ factories and not as the fully faceted individuals they are. 
And I think this board has done a good job of trying to remember that they really are fully faceted individuals, not just little germ factories. <laughs> so I hope that all the teachers feel likewise as well. We really value you and your commitment to our students because they are more than just little germ factories. <laughs> All right, are we good on board discussion? Okay, all right, so item 16, board request for more information. I think we got all that out already. We might just wanna combine that, L and P. Uh, all right, item 17, adjournment. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great night. Do we need a motion? You don't? Know?